In this video, I build a system to produce every type of chocolate. I also build a tiny charcoal factory as well as systems for making cinder flour, caramel and ginger dough. Let's create chocolate. That's the name of the game today. And thanks to the last video, we've got this amazing building to build a chocolate factory inside of. In fact, this building's already got a whole bunch of stuff in it already, including a big old storage system. And through here, we've got a cocoa bean farm. And upstairs, we've got a honey farm, as well as a couple of little contraptions even further upstairs, which gives us sugar and and takes milk out of buckets, sends it down a bunch of pipes, and puts it into these fluid tanks next to our honey. And making chocolate is pretty easy. You need sugar, cocoa beans, and milk. However, there are a bunch of different types of chocolate, including hot chocolate, which needs cocoa powder, and dark chocolate, and white chocolate, which both require cocoa butter. And cocoa butter and cocoa come from crushing crushed cocoa. And crushed cocoa, interestingly enough, comes from pressing cocoa beans, which is a bit weird. But every single recipe for the different types of chocolate requires requires a blaze burner and i've been thinking about blaze burners you see the problem with blaze burners is they need fuel something like lava or coal will do but getting an unlimited lava source is a bit of a pain over here at the power station we're actually using the train that goes to the nether to grab that for us and it's all happening underneath this building but that all relies on chunk loading stuff it's very unreliable i often have to start and stop the power station because it runs out of lava it's just not ideal but the reason this works is because it's pulling from an infinite source of lava. The create mod will consider any lava. Ah, oh, jeez. No, no, this is not what I wanted. <clears throat> As I was saying, the create mod will consider any area of fluid that's more than 10,000 blocks as infinite, and therefore it won't take away from it. We will just take it, which is great. And it's 100% possible to import a whole bunch of lava into the world. Ah, oh, Jen, why? Dig an absolutely massive hole somewhere and create ourselves a an infinite lava source but i don't want to do that even though i should because the power station's broken because of the lava train no i'm not doing it my other source of infinite fuel is gonna come from yet again my wood farm i've got so much wood it's unbelievable you've got wood yes i've got lots of wood mainly logs but lots i've got i've got wood okay you did that doesn't mean what you think it means it does but get your mind out the gutter i'm probably hardly ever going to use any of those things but the good thing about blaze burners is i can feed them logs Alternatively, I could feed them planks, which actually gives you the exact same burn time as a whole log, so that's four times as much burn time. And I can even feed them slabs, although that is half the amount of burn time. But of course, the most efficient way to do this would be to smelt all of these logs and turn it into charcoal, because charcoal will give them a whole 80 seconds worth. And seeing as there's very little going on in here under this area, might as well use this area here to actually produce that. So we're going to put a funnel on there, we're going to put a funnel on there. One filter is only going to allow charcoal and that's the output and the other filter is just going to allow logs that we've got in ridiculous supply and we're going to put that allow list on there now all we need is power bring a bunch of this over this way grab some chain drive whack on a gearbox stick on one of those and that should hopefully be the fan turning in totally the wrong direction that's fine put one of those there there we go blowing through that vent block there nice we just need to get the conveyors going Excellent. And then I need to extend that. Is it going to work? There we go. We just got some through. I don't know where it went, but it went in. Right, let's take a bunch. Wow, we nearly got a thousand already. Let's take a bunch of that to get us going. So after a little while, I've now got over 5,000 charcoal in here, which is going to be plenty enough to create us lots and lots of chocolate. You might also notice I've got some candy canes in here, and that's because before I got to chocolate, I decided to fiddle about with caramel. And this horrendous looking machine does generate caramel. We've got a whole tank's worth of caramel in there and the way this works is a mechanical arm takes sugar out of there puts it in that water base in there and it's getting water from behind there this mechanical arm takes charcoal from there and puts it into that blaze burner there and it works but it's a big old mess it's taking up lots of room and outside doesn't look particularly great either because it's all coming through the wall and building that made me realize that we're going to need a whole bunch of space for all of these processes and having these tanks here is just not going to be useful for us at all see i'm going to need this these three tanks plus another four tanks to hold all the chocolate and i thought the best place to put those would actually be in this back wall here in our actual little shop but first things first i need to demolish this caramel making machine tidy all this up and then get our tanks set up in here but i'm pretty much out of tanks and i don't really have enough copper sheet to produce much more so i guess it's time to go back into our little workshop and make a whole bunch of copper sheet 
There we go. And adding those into this room, we can actually just about squeeze five tanks right into the corner of this room, but that is taking up a whole bunch of space. Could decorate a whole bunch better like that, but then I guess I'd have to pump in from the bottom and take out from the top. That might not be a bad idea. And then we could use this underground area here for all of that ugly looking pipe work. You see, while create pipes are absolutely fantastic, in order to get them next to each other, you need to click on them to make them look like that. And I think they look really ugly like that. But then you can put them next to each other. But then when you want to go around a corner, it gets tricky again. Unless you use the copper casing. And then you can go around corners with these things without them interacting. And when we're going to be having hundreds of these pipes running around this entire factory, yeah, it's just going to look gross. And you can already see doing this is already very bulky and very ugly, but it's kind of working. So now we've got seven tanks for all of the different things we're going to need. We've got milk, honey, caramel, chocolate, hot chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. And in the future, maybe if we even got some dragon's breath, we could make some ruby chocolate. And that's our honey now all connected. And look at it, it's already going. Are we getting honey through here? We are. Oh, this is good news. Although for honey, because that's going to be relatively slow coming in, a buffer tank might not be a bad idea. And that's going to store all the honey. Now, I'm also going to need to be able to get threshold switches on all of these. And that means probably digging holes in the wall behind them that said i don't need one on the honey because we can't really stop the bees from processing so they'll just have to back up but having one for all of the others is going to be a good idea well i guess i'm demolishing the caramel next because i want to get that milk down underground next and i need it in that corner Okay, the milk is now being sent all the way across to our milk tanks. And that's just coming straight from the little milk processing plant, which means we've got honey, milk, and caramel all at the front. We're now not producing any caramels. So first things first, with this caramel machine, we need a basin with water in it. And the way I've done that is just to add a water source in down here with the pump going up. That's going past our little blaze burner, and that's coming into the side here. We've then got a pipe coming out here with a smart fluid pipe on it with a caramel bucket filter, which is then going to send the caramel once it's created down there and along these pipes all the way to our caramel tank. So all I need to do is get sugar into there and charcoal into the blaze burner and we're winning. So if I knock a hole in the floor and bring some more spruce trim across here to these ones, we can get a couple of little draw controllers on there with the depot in front of each one of those. Brass funnels on the front, one with sugar and one with charcoal. And the sugar one needs to be set to exactly two sugar because otherwise we'll make mundane potion instead of caramel. We need a mixer on the top with a cog going into that bit of chain drive to power that and that's our mixer powered and we just need a mechanical arm in fact we need two because i found out the hard way if you have one mechanical arm for both of this it will put charcoal in there as well even if i tell this basin here to only produce caramel if i put a mechanical arm on and select both of those the input and that as the output and that as the output it will still put charcoal into the mixing bowl even though it's got a filter on it so we'll have one to take the sugar from there and deposit it in there and we'll shove that there and we'll then we'll have one to take the charcoal from there and deposit it in there and we'll put that there so all these need now is a little bit of power which is very easy because we can just steal it from there and there we go we now have a brand new caramel factory producing us lots and lots of caramel in there which should hopefully now be going through these pipes here and there it is along this pipe here and look it's already full and while all that's been going on i thought i'd check in on our charcoal supply and see how that's going on and we've got twenty-one and a half thousand of it already yeah I don't, I don't think we're going to run out of charcoal. So for the cocoa beans then, we just need to press them and crush them. So I've made a little bit more space in here by moving our stairs over to this side of the room. And now we've got good access to our trim for our items, as well as power. So let's start by adding a draw controller slave on there, throwing down a little bit of a belt in front of that. We'll put a funnel on there and our cocoa beans will come out of there. And if we put our press there, that's going to be able to press those into the crushed cocoa beans. If I get rid of all of this and put an item drain in there instead, then I can have this belt running straight down here with the press on there and then we can get those crushing wheels right there and that squeezed everything up nice and tightly now all i need to do is shorten that belt slightly throw another one in there and now all of the items can go back into the storage system that way brilliant and now all i need is a bit of power now this little shaft here just happens to link up directly with that so that's convenient and we could even steal a little bit of that power there with this chain drive here to power those belts so that's convenient extending that belt out one and throwing a gearbox in there gets 
there's those going, so that's convenient. Now, all I need is power for these crushing wheels. Now, how lucky would it be if I put a vertical one there and that span the right way it is doing? Now, for the other crushing wheel, would I be lucky enough to throw in another one of those there and get that on there? I would. Look at that. We're all going in the right directions. This is wonderful. So, all we need now on there are some cocoa beans. That funnel going in the right direction, and here they go. The cocoa beans are being crushed. They're going through there, and that should be giving us cocoa and cocoa butter. Oh, this is great. Nice. Grab ourselves a few andesite bars and make sure that there's no safety issues going on here with those crushing wheels. Lovely. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, it's not that safe. Jeez, just trying to put a lamp on, mate. Which means we've now got all of the ingredients we need to start producing chocolate. However, we must not forget that we need ginger dough. So I guess the only ingredient we're not actually producing is cinder flour. Now, I did actually have a ridiculous amount of it stored somewhere, but I can't remember where I've put it. So let's just hop through here. Hope we don't get run over by the train again. Now, if you remember all the way back earlier on in this season, down these stairs, I dug out a huge area just here with an amazing contraption. What did I do with all this nether wrap? I must put it somewhere. So fingers crossed in my pocket here is the actual correct contraption that I need. And it is. Now, is it still full of nether wrap, though? That's the question. It is not. Although it is still full of cobblestone. Okay, the machine is now empty of cobblestone. So let's pick it up again and go find somewhere with a little bit less basalt and a little bit more netherrack. Off you go. Go on. There we go. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. Well, I've already come a very long way with this thing. And it has just occurred to me that I already have 24,000 netherrack in my backpack. So I probably didn't need to do any of this. And because of this, we've got a whole bunch of warp stuff, which we've never had before. So back home, I need to put this contraption down somewhere it's not going to damage everything. This could be dangerous. Let's throw it down there. Oh, uh, there we go. We're, oh, jeez. Yeah, I managed to delete a bunch of snow. That's fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is come and put a bunch of netherrack in there. Give that a bunch of emerald upgrades. And then just spew out all of this netherrack that I've collected onto the floor. All of it? Yeah, all of it. 32,000 netherrack. And now, I'm going to just put all of that in there. Lovely. Now all I've got to do is get the rest of it out of here. Oh, jeez. You need to take even more, mate. Just another casual 32,000 netherrack going onto the floor. So now that we've got a small dimensions with the netherrack in here, I guess we should get that crushed. And we also need to crush a bunch of flour as well. But we are very, very quickly running out of space for dealing with all of our chocolate in this building. What I should really be doing is building an entire new building for this. Okay, so realistically, this building, whilst it is absolutely massive and has plenty of room, it doesn't have enough room. You see, this area needs to stay open for a nice little shop. But we've already pretty much filled up with this room. We've pretty much filled up this room. We've filled up this room. And we've filled up this room. And that leaves this room here and a couple of very small little spaces upstairs, which realistically are not enough room to produce all the things we want to produce in. We'll crush our nether rack and our wheat in here to get our cinder flour and our wheat flour in this room. Room. And then in this room, instead of pumping in chocolate and stuff from downstairs, we're going to actually produce our chocolate liquids in here. But that means this entire building will have no room at all to produce any of the confectionery. We need to press ginger to make gingerbread men, press chocolate to make chocolate bars of all of the different types. We need to make our honey glazed squeak berries. We need to make our marshmallows on sticks. We need to make our chocolate glazed marshmallows. And then we need to make all of these candy bars as well. We also need to make honey candy and candy canes as well well and none of those take up a massive amount of room on their own but in order to get them all wired up and all pumped and everything into the right direction it's going to be difficult so i think realistically we're going to need another building and this building is going to actually produce all of the actual final product candy bits and pump them back over there for the shop oh jeez i really wasn't planning for this chocolate industry to be quite so big right before we get carried away doing another building then let's get this cinder flour and this wheat flour crushed okay so this is how we're going to do it in this room we're going to have wheat coming from there across this belt we're going to have netherrack coming across there from this bolt they're both going to get crushed and then just go into here connecting that up like that creates that set of crushing wheels connecting that to there makes that belt go and I'm really kind of hoping that if I put one of those there, that's going to be going in the right direction as well. It is good. And then if I connect that there, all I need to do is put a gearbox down there. There we go. That's working. And now that's working. OK, all of the belts are in. Now, if I connect that to there, we should start getting netherrack through here. We are. That's going in. And now it's getting crushed very quickly as well. And now that should allow wheat to start coming out. And it is. We're getting wheat flour and cinder flour coming through here. This is fantastic. So now we're getting a good amount of cinder flour through here, but I'm not seeing any wheat flour at all which probably means that's managed to find its way into one of our magic drawers somewhere magic drawers yeah the hidden ones that i can't find 
Okay, that's all fixed. We're getting a good amount of cinder flour in here now and wheat flour. This is good news. So now I want to take this cinder flour and this wheat flour and make some gingerbread. And I believe that process is going to be very similar to this one here. Yes, it is, but it needs three ingredients. Sugar, cinder flour, wheat flour, and honey. So we need to take pipes up from our honey upstairs. And I think we're going to build that into this room here. Bruce trim through there. That brings items into here. And then I believe honey is... Oh, it's the first one. Okay, so it's that one there. Fantastic. And this one doesn't require a blaze burner, so we don't need to worry about charcoal. So we just need our three ingredients coming in from there onto some depots. And they all just require one each. One sugar, one wheat flour, one cinder flour. Let's throw a bowl in there with a mixer on the top. So we're going to collect that, that and that. We're going to deposit it in there. We're going to have the mechanical arm up there. If we put a cog there, that's going to power both of those. We need a cog next to that. I don't know if I smash a hole in there. One of them there, one of them there. Bring that through here. Chain drive there. Power in that pump. That's good. We should start seeing honey coming in. We have vertical gearbox coming out of that one. And then all we need is a cog on there. And now we've got everything powered. We should start producing ginger dough. But I need that to be on forced round robin we just got to get the items out of there put another one of those there with a funnel going in with ginger dough on the front a little depot just there now mechanical arm take from there 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 deposit in there and deposit in there come on you got this you can do this do it right just for me come on make me some ginger dough there we go now it's doing that doing it again here we go we have a ginger dough is it gonna pick it up it is and it's gonna put it in there amazing oh well that all worked out rather well the only problem with this little setup here is it now comes through into the ceiling in here. Here we go, we're making ginger dough. Is it going to pick it up and put it in there? Come on, mechanical arm, get that ginger dough. Yes, it did. Oh, and there it goes. Amazing. So the last thing to do in this building is to produce our actual chocolate liquids. And I'm kind of hoping I can squeeze all of that in here too. Back in my creative test world, I wanted to find out if it's possible to have two fluids running through one pipe. You see, I've got milk coming in here and it's going into our mixer there, which is created chocolate. And I was hoping I could take the chocolate out of the same pipe and put it into there using these smart pipes but if i try and do that it just breaks the pipe and it turns out that i can't so for this system we're going to have to have two pipes on every single basin and that becomes a bit of a problem and the reason it's a problem is because i wanted this to be stackable as in to get these in lines together now i can stop the pipes from interacting with each other like that so that works but it's not exactly stackable so basically the system's going to end up looking something like this with all of the different types of pipes coming out the backs of the mixers going into the right tanks and the milk pipe coming around the side and through the front and that can all link together and then we've just got to get all the items in there which will have to do with mechanical arms because we don't have any other way of doing it I got a comment the other day saying i'm not sure if you overthink things or don't think things through enough and i think it's a combination of both see i'm learning this as i'm going along i don't know all of the rules i don't know how it's all going to be and i haven't planned it out in creative before so i'm kind of just winging it and trying to make it work that's our chocolate output and our milk is coming in from down there and i've got to now squirrel that around here somehow without it all connecting blaze burners here i mean get rid of all of those basins here that looks okay milk pipe across there kind of looks all right but it's making a bit of a mess of that but it's okay if that was one block over i'd be so much happier i've got an idea we'll just move our chocolate over by one we don't need to have it all next to each other we'll have that one as a, sp a spare that's fine there we go that's tidier that's loads better all right then mixers on top of all of those oh look at that power just happens to line up let's just drag that across here with those now we need to get all of those in there again. That pump there. There we go. And then we can power that from there. We need to power that one somehow. And then we need to connect that still over to here. There we go. Little vertical gearbox underneath that. Another one there and one of those there. And now they're all powered. Okay. Well, that's now going to be filling all of those up with milk. It is. Oh, no. Four smart pipes. And then we get rid of these here. And we're going to put the smart pipes there. And then we can make sure that only the right fluids go out of there. Okay. Okay, so all I've got to do now is get the right ingredients into the right bowls. Charcoal, sugar, cocoa beans, cocoa, and cocoa butter. All right, so we know what we're going to be producing. I'm going to put some item frames on here. We've got normal... Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I want to put it in the item frame. Normal chocolate, white chocolate, dark chocolate, and then hot chocolate. Just casually making a little bit more brush sheet because I need a bunch more mechanical arms. So this one is going to take charcoal, and it's going to put it in all of those blaze burners there. And that can sit just there. 
This one's going to take sugar and cocoa beans and it's going to put it in there. This one's going to take sugar and cocoa butter and put it in there. Ah, now this one needs to take sugar, cocoa butter and two lots of cocoa beans and put it in there. And that could be interesting because that's two of one item and one of the other ones. And the last one, hot chocolate, needs two cocoa powders and one sugar. So this one's going to take one sugar, two cocoa powders, put it in there. And that's all of those arms set up. But that means I need definitely two of those coming out. And I think I'm going to go for two of those and just hope for the best with that. So all we need now is a bit of power for these arms. And I guess we can just steal power from here with a bunch of cogs. One there, one there. Oh, do I dare do it? I do. Let's do this. Let's create some chocolate. It's going. We are creating chocolate, but we've got no milk. And these things are just going to keep putting it in regardless of how little milk there is. Why have we got no milk? What did I do to the milk? Oh, I didn't do the things on here. Oops, that's where all the milk's gone. Okay, we have filters in place now, so I've got to delete all that milk again. It's fine. And we're still getting milk in there. How are we still getting milk in there? These ones are right. They're getting the right thing in there. But why am I still getting milk in there? Okay, no, that's right now. And what about this one? Are we going to get the right thing in it? I don't want milk. No, I want hot chocolate. For the smart pipe filters, they actually require these buckets on the front, but there isn't a bucket of hot chocolate. So I don't know how I'm going to get a filter on there. Oh, it looks like the right stuff's coming out now, though. Hang on a minute. There we go. It is working. There was just obviously milk backed up in the system, but now we're producing all of the chocolates. This is wonderful. Have we got any milk left? We have. We've got a bit of milk in there now. That's coming in nice and fast. Our honey all seems to have vanished. It's slightly concerned. Turning. Where's all my honey gone? I've got a bunch of it over here. Oh, I didn't put the top back on this tank, did I? Oops. So there we go. We're now producing a whole bunch of chocolate. We've got honey, milk, caramel, which doesn't do anything yet. And all of the chocolate's coming in. And I think that looks great. I like that that's at the back of this shop. So let's just go and check on our production room. And it's all working out rather well. Even though the mechanical arms are technically overfilling a lot of them, we've got 16 cocoa beans in there, which we don't need. Wonderful. Oh, look at them go. They're all going like crazy. I'd quite like to slow these arms down, to be honest with you, but uh, I guess we'll just keep it how it is. Well, there is a problem with this setup, as usual, and that is I can no longer get at the door. The door is behind that bit there. I suppose I could move the door instead and just have a window there, but um, I guess this door can just be for show. Don't. Well, something was bound to go wrong. For some reason, the dark chocolate hasn't filled up. Everything else has, but that one hasn't. Let's go figure it out. Yeah, it, 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 may, it may have all the wrong ingredients in there. Way too many of them. I think that's the problem. I also need to find a way of stopping these from actually working individually when each of the tanks is full. Now, I'm hoping that I can just put redstone links on the actual mechanical arms to stop them. Something a little bit like that, but that's not going to stop this one throwing tons of charcoal in all of the blaze burners. What are we going to do about this? See, I've got a filter on on the front to tell it to only make that type of ingredient but once they get too many items in they just stop producing why are those locked oh they're locked because of those ah that's not very good then is it let's uh, undo that i think i can actually put redstone links directly on top of them like that which is a little bit awkward but it should work there we go that sorted that little problem out the only way i can realistically do that is to slow the mechanical arms right down so this produces faster than the mechanical arms can put the items in in that case we'll have that there one of those there one of those there there, a gearbox there and a gearbox there and a vertical gearbox there and now those arms are going to go really slow and that should solve this little problem okay now that those problems are sorted and we are actually getting more dark chocolate down here there is one more problem in this building that i've only just found out about and that's because my latest video has just gone live on youtube and pretty much all of the comments are telling me how i massively messed up this honey farm which was the focus of the last video apparently instead of using this crazy contraption to use deployers with empty bottles to take the honey out of there you can just pump the honey straight out of the beehives with pipes which means i can move all of this back and save a ton of room in here which i can't i, I just can't believe it in fact i don't believe it i'm gonna have to test this before i start demolishing it okay so back on my test world where it's nice and safe let's just demolish a bunch of this stuff get some pipes on the back of these beehives nests no the hives in this one don't need any of that anymore power the pump and let's just see if oh yeah look there's, there's honey in the pipe oh i can't believe that i even got an achievement for it fine let's smash it all to bits that takes up substantially less space in here and it means i can finally have a barrier around the stairs to stop everyone falling down oh that's loads better okay because this mechanical arm is now just perpetually wasting charcoal to feed the blaze burners under there even though none of these are running because everything stopped because we've got 
got enough fluid. I need to make an AND gate that works with four different inputs to stop it from running. So we need our four redstone links on here. And they need to be set to the same signals as these ones, which is chocolate and pipe, basically. Then we get a redstone torch and bring it out the front. Grab a little bit of redstone dust in front of that. Then all we need to do is invert that signal like that. Throw another redstone link down there. We put charcoal and chocolate on that one. Now, if any one of them decide it needs to run, then that will turn off and the charcoal will be allowed to be fetched. So now all I've got to do is use this last redstone link here, put it on there, put it in receive mode, put charcoal and chocolate, and that's going to stop that arm from running. Amazing. And then I'm just going to block all of that in as if it never existed. And now, hopefully, that doesn't look too weird as we go up there. No, it doesn't. You can hardly even tell. Well, all of this is thirsty work, and I've got all of this hot chocolate here, and I've never drunk one before, so I've created this temporary little thing here, which will hopefully, there we go, create hot chocolate. Let's have a drink. Oh, that's nice. What does it Oh, it gives us regeneration. Lovely. Oh, I'll have a few more of those, please. And there we go. 31 hot chocolates just for me. Let's shove it in here somewhere and marvel at all of the crazy things we're making now. This is ridiculous. 